when I came in, I already knew I wanted to do AI, and I said, that's what I want to be, and I was assigned McCarthy as the advisor. He also came just about that time, yeah. you know, maybe six months earlier than me, uh, and at that time, you know, Stanford only had numerical analysis, George Forsyth and so on, and George, uh, Harriet, and uh, it turns out uh, the big computer was Burroughs at that time. Everybody was using it. And McCarthy got the first PDP-1, maybe first or second that DEC ever made, and it was all by itself. And there were people like Steve Russell and others building time-sharing you know, systems on top of it and so on. And, and the interesting thing was all of them had the American work ethic, right? They would come in the morning, work till five, and then go <laughs> go and do other things. I would do just the opposite. I would come at four in the evening, talk to them from six in the evening till eight in the morning. I would work on the computer. And I thought I died and went to heaven because in those days, the time on even PDP-1 was like $1,000 an hour. So every day I was burning like $10,000 to $15,000 an hour. You basically had an early personal computer. Absolutely. I, and nobody else there. Tell me of your first impressions of McCarthy when you came to Stanford. No, McCarthy even then had a beard and was, you know, kind of... Uh, he was kind of... dreamy. He was kind of somewhere else, you know. So the great thing about McCarthy is he's, he kind of let you do whatever you want. <laughs> and he would kind of suggest some things. And the, one of the suggestions was, hey, we just got this computer. It has an everyday converter, and you can digitize speech. Maybe one of the students can build a speech recognition system. So I said, I'll do it, you know. And that's how I got into it. I come from Indian language, Sanskrit, and so on, right? They're all phonetically based. You speak what you write, and you write what you speak. And uh, so from that point of view, one of the first things you, you learn there is all the alpha vowels. And then once you've learned the vowels, then you take the consonants and kind of say, they can be modified by the vowels, or the vowels can be added to the consonants. So, ah, uh, ah, uh, and then ka, and, uh, and ga, and those are stops. And then cha, and ta. So they all have the same vowel, but different consonants. And uh, in Indian language, all the consonants are organized together. And they, you learn them, and they're either aspirated or unaspirated. You know, so if you're a linguist, you would know all this. I was not a linguist. I was, <laughs> came from a different culture. <coughs> but I invented for myself the same kinds of things. I said, let me see if I can recognize vowels as the first thing. And I built a pretty good working vowel recognizer. <laughs> okay. And he was happy. You know, he was, one of the great things about him is he was very permissive, empowering. And uh, he would say, okay, you want to do that? Go, go do it. <laughs> and that was exciting in a way. But at the same time, uh, if he had kind of taken more time and spent more time on, with the students and so on, maybe we might have done a bigger, bigger better job. Because he had great ideas, you know, when, whenever he would say something. Even, I remember, we were driving back together to Arrastadero Road once, and he said, you know, that the, it is not what the computers do, it's going to be what the applications of computers that will transform the world, right? You know, he, even, even then, even though he was kind of doing theoretical AI and so on, he was seeing the, applic in the applications 